YouTube official gaming network and welcome to episode 3 of our Jetpack Joyride game in Java tutorial. Last episode, we created our resolutions for our window for our game. This episode, we're going to be creating a dimension for our game. So think of it as like creating an actual 2D dimension for our window. And because it's a 2D dimension, we have to uh, use the res you have to take in a 2D resolution, which is the width and height or some people like to call it uh, length and width and we're going to use that as the resolution for our dimension and in this case the resolution will be width by height so we're pretty much going to be creating sort of the 2d dimension for our game today it's not really creating a 2d dimension for our game but uh, it's good to imagine it that way but before we do any of this we need to make our game class an extension of canvas I'm just going to type it, then I'll explain it to you guys like I usually do with the public static int, stuff like that. So anyway, uh, after our public class game, we're going to put a space, then type extends and space canvas. So typing this bit of code, we're pretty much making our game class an extension of another class called canvas. If you're wondering why we get an error, pretty much we need to import any class that is outside of the package that our game class exists in. I actually don't know why we need to import it. It's one of those things that I feel like should exist but should not exist at the same time. But anyway, uh, to fix this error we have to import canvas because it's in a different package to our game class. So to fix that, we just uh, hover our mouse over the uh, little error lying there or canvas, then click import canvas java.ort and as you can see it creates a new line of code in our class called import java.ort.canvas so this line of code pretty much imports canvas from the java.ort package so the little words before the name of the class we're importing is pretty much the name of the package so the name of the package in this case would be java.ort and uh, as you can see there's another example here with our com.ogn.jetpack that's the name of our package and by the way, I don't think I've explained this, but this line of code specifies what package this class exists in. And it's always the first line of code on any class in Java. So now let me explain what exactly happens when our game class is an extension of Canvas. By being an extension of Canvas, all the variables like integers, strings, and booleans, and uh, all the methods that exist inside of the Canvas class also technically exist inside of a game class. So we inherit all the variables and methods that exist inside our Canvas class. So now I'm going to go into GIMP and I'm actually going to draw you guys a diagram of how inheritance actually works. When working with inheritance, there's two types of classes, well, three, but there's only two important types of classes at the moment. So first, there's the super class. I'm just going to call it A for animal because... Uh, a lot of people use like animals and like dogs and other stuff as an example to explain inheritance. So let's say our superclass is animal and a subclass is a hippo. So in this diagram, animal is pretty much a superclass. Let me just put sup for just for super. And hippo is pretty much a subclass of animal. So whenever a class extends another class, the class it is extending becomes a superclass and the class we are using the extension in becomes a subclass. It's kind of like folders and subfolders when you're like browsing folders on your computer and things like that. And this even works with packages so there will be lots of sub packages of this package in the future, com.ogn.jetpack. So what I'm pretty much saying is that Canvas is now a superclass and our game class is now a subclass of Canvas. And uh, let me show you some more explanations here. Uh, let me just remove the sub and superclass thing. 
let's pretend we our animal uh, has some variables. So let's say our, our animal has an x and y coordinate, which we will be using a lot in the future. And let's say it also has a method called eat. Now, all subclasses that extend the animal superclass get exactly the same variables and methods that the superclass has, so pretty much, wow, that is a terrible circle. Pretty much all of these variables and methods will now also exist inside our hippo class. So uh, by making our hippo class a subclass of our animal superclass, we get the same variables and methods that exist inside of our animal superclass. And we can also make more subclasses. There can be there can be a million subclasses of a superclass, there can be one subclass of a superclass. And they'll all have exactly the same variables and methods. So let's say we made a giraffe class that will have the same amount of variables and methods as well. And let's say we made an elephant class. That is a really small circle. E, yeah. And uh, it'll also have the X and Y integers and uh, eat. All right, now here's where things start to get a little complex. Just because a subclass is a subclass, it doesn't mean we can make that a superclass as well. So we could actually make our hippo a superclass and... Uh, have extensions of hippo and that would work perfectly fine the way hippo is an extension of animal. And a good way to demonstrate this is uh, using uh, feline and canine, which uh, if you didn't know, somehow is uh, cats and dogs. So canine uh, dogs and felines are pretty much cats. So yeah, let's say we have canine and feline superclasses. Let's say the feline superclass also has a method called cat, but it'll also have our x and y coordinates, I mean integers, and uh, our eat method, because even if it's a superclass, if it's extending animal, it's still technically a subclass. And by the way, uh, we're allowed to create any variables any new variables and methods inside of subclasses as well. So in our hippo class, we could have like a Z coordinate, like it's a 3D game. Uh, we could have a sleep method for giraffe. And uh, yeah, we can add as many new variables and methods as we want to subclasses. It's just that, of course, it will only exist in the class in which it is created. So yeah, uh, back to our feline, our feline, We'll still have our x and y integers and our eat method and a new method called cat because felines are pretty much cats. And our canine superclass will also have same x and y coordinates and eat method just like every other superclass, I mean subclass, but we can give it a new method and uh, let's call it dog because canines are pretty much dogs. So yeah, and of course we can create extensions of feline. We could call it cat, uh, tiger, and leopard. We can make three new classes that are pretty much an extension of a superclass, which is an extension of another superclass. So these classes being an extension of feline, uh, all of these variables and methods will be existing inside of our uh, classes that extend feline. And of course, uh, we can create uh, classes that are an extension of canine as well. Let's make it dog and wolf. And of course, they will all get the same methods and variables that our canine class has as well. So yeah, uh, by the way, excuse the horrible handwriting. And uh, that was just an explanation of what inheritance in Java is. I'm pretty sure inheritance in Java is similar, if not exactly the same as inheritance in other languages like C, but I'm not too familiar with it. So anyway, we're gonna, now that this whole inheritance thing is out of the way, 
back to our dimensions finally that's what this episode was going to be about right well i might make this i might make inheritance part of the title of this episode now because it's taken up so much time so anyway now we're going to create a dimension object as i explained last episode we can create an object out of any class similarly to how we create integers or strings or any other variable so to create an object out of a class we're going to type we're going to actually make this object private and the object will be a private dimension so now we type the name of what we want to give our object and because the dimension will pretty much resemble a 2d dimension or like the size of our window we're going to call it size and we're going to set that equal to a new dimension usually when we're creating objects like this we always set a new object equal to a new dimension and if we put a semicolon on the end as you can see we get an error one of them is because we have an imported dimension because it's in a different package to our game class so yeah we'll just import that now also a shortcut for importing things you can just uh, click on the word or object that needs to be imported and you can type Control shift o or command shift o if you're on a Mac computer like me. So, command shift o and that will import it automatically. And the other reason why we get an error is because whenever we create an object out of another class, we have to put two brackets on the end. But there's one more thing before we move on from this dimension object. It has to take in two variables. And because I explained before, we're going to be sort of creating a 2D dimension it needs two variables, the width and height, or length and width. And to make our dimension take in those variables, in the brackets, we simply type width, comma, height. And so we can actually make our game class take in variables if we need it. If we're making a game object for our entity class we will be creating in the future, our entity will need to have an X and Y coordinate. So in here, so when we're creating an entity, we will need to specify the x and y coordinates in the brackets. Because our dimension takes in two variables, a width and height, we'll type width and height. Now that we gave it two variables, our dimension object can work a lot easier. So now we're going to actually create a constructor for our game. Now I'll do what I usually do, type type it in, then explain what it is. So, so pretty much you type public game the brackets then we're gonna actually give it a body so make a little curly bracket by the way whenever we're making a body or we use curly brackets press enter and it should create the second curly bracket for you if you're using Eclipse's default settings now I'm gonna explain what a constructor is it's pretty much the first line of code that gets called whenever we create a game object so let's say uh, we create some code here uh, if we create an object of our game whenever we finish creating our game object our game will go straight to the lines of code inside of the constructor of our game object now our not every class needs to have a constructor a lot of classes uh, don't even have a constructor and that's fine you can still make a game object without having a constructor but if you want lines of code to be called immediately whenever we first create an object of game and that's what the constructor is used for to be the first lines of code that get called whenever we create an object and we can actually make our game take in parameters like we made our dimension take in our width and height so we can actually make it so we have to we have to specify an integer called random as you can and as you can see we get an error because we need to specify an integer called random for our game when we haven't so uh, let's make random 31 and uh, yeah, so in the constructor, the random is now equal to 31. Now, if you're wondering why we don't get an error in the dimension object when we take away our width and height, is because classes can have multiple constructors. So I'm going to actually create another constructor for our game. I'll actually create two. Uh, one has to take in an integer. Uh, one has to take in nothing. And uh, one has to take in a string called text. I need to spell string right. And we can pretty much choose which constructor we use. So let's say by specifying an integer, we're pretty much using this constructor. If we specify nothing at all, we're pretty much using this constructor. 
And if we specify a string, we're pretty much using this constructor. And if I uh, remove uh, the string text constructor, as you can see, we get an error because we don't need to specify a string for any of our constructors in our game objects. So yeah, the reason why our dimension's not getting an error then is because there's another constructor in the dimension class in, in which where it doesn't take anything. And there's also one that takes in a width and height, and that's the one we will be using. So yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. I'm just gonna remove these comments. And uh, I don't think I've explained this before. I'm not sure if I have, but to type a comment in Java, just type double slash and then uh, whatever you want to type. Now, uh, comments don't interact with our game in any way. They're just there to like tell us things and we can create uh, multiple lined comments. So to do that, we put uh, one forward slash, then an asterisk. Then we can uh, pretty much press enter and it'll create the other lines for us. And as you can see, if you're using the clips Eclipse's default settings, the color of text that is part of a comment would look like this. And to end a multiple line comment, you just do an asterisk first, then a backslash. And of course, it will not affect the code or our game in any way. So yeah, anyway, we're going to write some code into our game constructor for when, we're, for when we actually create a game object next episode. So firstly, we're going to type set preferred size and we're going to set that equal to size and you might be wondering where the hell does set preferred size come from pretty much this exists because it exists in the canvas class so we're pretty much inheriting that method so we are so we'll be able to use it and what this pretty much does it is that it says the preferred size for our canvas equal to our size dimension and uh we can also make it set the maximum size equal to size. Type this line of code as well. And we'll also make it set the minimum size equal to our size dimension. Oh, we can type set minimum size equal to size. So pretty much by typing this, no matter what, the size of our canvas will be equal to our size dimension. This episode is a lot longer than I intended it to be because I went really in depth with everything, which is what I plan to do for this series. Educate you guys the most I possibly can. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program in Java, please let them know about my channels and a link to this series or my Mario series if you have a Twitter account. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.